In this video, we're going to look at how to break down a complex circuit and solve for the current and voltage uh, with each component or resistor within the circuit. Here's our example for today. Find the current through and voltage drop across each resistor. And so you notice that we know the values of each resistor, and we also know the voltage of the power source as well. So the first thing you should always do whenever you start a problem like this is start naming uh, what the different components of the circuit are. In this case, we're going to name each resistor. So I'll start by calling the first resistor up after the battery uh, R1. I'll call R2 this resistor that comes in parallel on the left, and R3 that other parallel resistor, the one on the right. And now that I've decided which resistors are which, we have a convention and it's become, going to become a lot easier for us to solve for these values. And so the first thing we want to do in a problem like this is if we know all the resistances in a circuit, almost always the first thing you want to do is find the total resistance of the circuit because that's going to allow us to find the current flowing out of the battery. So to start, we're going to have to start combining these resistors. Uh, I like to start with simple resistors that are in series with one another, but as you can see from this circuit, we don't actually have any simple series resistors right now, so we're going to have to start with the parallel resistors. What we have to do is take these two parallel resistors and find the equivalent resistance of those two so that we can redraw the circuit with a single resistor. So our formula for finding the equivalent resistance of two resistors, so I'll call that REQ, is 1 over that equivalent resistance is 1 over the first resistor in parallel, which is R2, plus 1 over the other resistor in parallel is R3. So I'll go ahead and fill in these values, 1 over 60 plus 1 over 80. And we could spend time finding a common denominator, but in these problems it's almost always just easier and faster to figure these out as a decimal. And so if I add 1 over 60 plus 1 over 80 in my calculator, I get 0 0.029167. That's 1 over REQ. So now that I have 1 over REQ is equal to the decimal, what I'm going to do is flip that fraction. So REQ is equal to 1 over 0 0.029167. And then again, I can do this in my calculator and find REQ is equal to 34.29 ohms. So now that I've found the equivalent resistor of those two parallel resistors, R2 and R3, I can redraw my circuit with those two parallel resistors replaced by a single equivalent resistor of 34.29 ohms. We still have R1 over here. That's the 40 ohm resistor. And so now you can see that after we've redrawn our circuit with that equivalent resistance, our circuit is basically two series resistors with R1 being 40 ohms and the equivalent resistance of 34.29. So we can find this total resistance of the circuit by adding R1 plus the equivalent resistor of those equivalent resistance of those two parallel resistors. So that would be 40 plus 34.29 gives me a total resistance for the circuit of 74.29 ohms. And again, this means that uh, we've combined all our resistors together into a single total resistance of 74.29 ohms. And so really, if we were to combine all those resistors together, we can think of this simplified circuit as a 12 volt battery connected to a 74.2 ohm resistor. Now the reason why we want to do this is because what it's going to allow us to do is find the current that's flowing out of the battery. 
So now that we have this information, we can try to find the current by using Ohm's law. So the total voltage of the battery is equal to the total current, I, of the battery times the total resistance of the battery. And so we can rearrange this. The total current coming out of the battery is equal to that total voltage divided by the total resistance. And this is a calculation we can now do with all the values that we have. So it would be 12 divided by 74.29 ohms. And so we get that the total current coming out of the battery is 0 0.1615 amps. In my final answer, I'm going to have to round to three sig figs, but I'm going to keep four sig figs for now, uh, and, and I'll show all my final values at the end of the video. So, now that we've gone ahead and found that total current that's coming out of the battery, we can see that that current that's coming out of the battery is heading straight into that first resistor, which we called R1. And so I'll call this current that's heading through R1, I1. And this is the same as I total, so 0 0.1615 amps. If we know the resistance of R1 and we know the current that's going through R1, that means that we can go ahead and find the voltage drop across resistor R1. So V equals IR, or V1 is equal to I1R1. So for this individual resistor, we can solve for that voltage drop. So I put in those values. I do the calculation, and I get 6.462 volts. And again, this is the voltage drop across R1. Now we're really close to finishing up the voltages for the other components of the circuit. So if we know the voltage drop of R1, which we can call V1, that we can see by Kirchhoff's loop rule that this 12 volts leaves the battery, heads through R1, and we lose some of those volts. And then either it's going to go through the 60 ohm resistor and come back, or it's going to go through the 80 ohm resistor and come back to the battery. So this means that in either of those loops, they through each of those resistors, V2 and V3, those voltage drops have to use up the rest of the voltage that hasn't been used up in V1, no matter which path that electron takes. So we can say that V2 is equal to the 12 volts that the battery started with, subtract away the voltage drop of V1, which is 6.462 volts. And so we can find that V2, the voltage drop across the second resistor, is equal to 5.538 volts. And by the same logic, because the electron also could have gone through the 80 ohm resistor instead and come back to the back of the battery, we know that having dropped across R1, you have to use up the rest of the voltage through V3, so we could also say that this is the same voltage drop by Kirchhoff's loop rule. Uh, V3 is the same as V2. At this point, we're very, very close to our final answer. So we've, in the previous slides, found everything we need to about resistor 1. Now we just have to finish up what we know for resistors 2 and 3. So let's start with R2. Uh, again, we can use Ohm's law for each individual resistor in the circuit, or we can use it for the whole circuit, which we did earlier to find the current coming out of the battery. Uh, and if we look at Ohm's law for this, we know now the voltage drop across the resistor, and we also know the resistance itself, which means that we can rearrange this for I2 and solve for the current that goes through R2 ourselves. So this would be 5.538 volts 
over that 60 ohm resistance gives us a current of 0 0.0923 amps. And I'll do the same for R3 here as well. We could do I3 is equal to V3 over R3. The voltage drop across V3 is the same as it was for V2, which was 5.538 volts divided by R3, which is 80 ohms. And we get a current there of 0 0.0629 amps. Now this is always a great point to do a quick check, so I'll do that right now. By uh, Kirchhoff's junction rule, or the current rule, we know that the current that leaves this, goes through this 40 ohm resistor, and then splits down each path, down R2 or over to R3, those, the, the current that goes into that junction has to be the same as the total current that comes out of that junction. So we could say, that I1 has to be equal to I2 plus I3. And we've solved for all three of these values, so we can do a quick check. We just have I2 and I3 right here, so here's I2, here's I3. Let's add those two values together and see what we get. And sure enough, we add them together, and we get 0 0.1615 amps, which was that original I1 we solved for using the total current uh, coming out of the battery, using the total resistance. So that's not a necessary step, but it's a great step to do during a test uh, or an assignment to check that your question is going, going well. And so the final thing I'm going to do is write up uh, the final values that we got rounded to the correct number of significant figures. So here were our three resistances that we had to solve for the voltage drop across each resistor and the current that flowed through each resistor. So let's just go ahead and write these up with the correct number of significant figures. So for R1, uh, let's start with the current, the current that we solved to go through R1 rounded to three significant figures is 0 0.162 amps and the voltage drop across R1 we found to be 6.46 volts and we can go to R2 the current through I2 was 0. 0.0923 amps and the voltage drop across the second resistor was 5.54 volts that leaves us with R3 same thing I3 0 0.0692 amps and the voltage drop across that third resistor was the same as the voltage drop across resistor 2 because they're in parallel, 5.54 volts. And so that's how you solve for the unknown values in a complex circuit.